Let's look at this funny little problem from Priya Remo 2012. It's a functional equation problem. And if you do not know what that means, that's perfectly all right. Um, for the moment, we don't need to know what functional equations are. But this is for your future reference. The problem says that we have a function from natural numbers to natural numbers. And the function has certain properties. And we want to know what is f of 1, f of 2, f of 20, up to f of 20 added up. Uh, before we go any further, let's talk a little bit about what is a function. If you do not know what is a function, this is a brief uh, reminder or a brief introduction to that. So you can think of function as an input-output machine. One favorite example that I have is that of squaring. So squaring. And uh, what this machine does is, it takes in a number, let's say 3, and gives out another number, which is, let's, in this particular case, is 9. Uh, this machine is this processing unit that takes in a number and gives out another number. That's what a function is. It's an input-output machine. Now, in this particular case, the function f, is from natural numbers to natural numbers. What that means is we are restricting to those functions whose input values are positive integers, whose output values are also positive integers. So input values belong to this set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. And the output values also belong to the set. Not all of them may appear as outputs, but nevertheless, they need to be natural numbers. That is what this particular symbol, this particular notation means, f of n to n. Okay, so now let's look at the conditions, the special conditions that this function must, uh, must satisfy. So firstly, it should have f of mn is equal to f of m times f of n. So in fact, this would work also for, this condition would work also for this squaring machine. Uh, let's take an example. Um, let's say f of 2 times 3. Here m is 2, n is uh, 3. Is it equal to f of 2 times f of 3? That's the question. Okay. So what is f of 2 times 3? Let's separately compute this. f of 2 times 3 is f of 6. And since the machine is squaring here, so that's equal to 6 square, that's 36. On the other hand, let's compute f of 2 times f of 3. f of 2 is 2 square. f of 3 is 3 square. So we have 4 times 9, that's also 36. Well. That's working, right? I mean, f of uh, 2 times 3 is f of 2 times f of 3, which is precisely this condition of multiplication that we have, the first condition that we have here. This is sometimes called the multiplicative property, uh, but we will not really go into that. Um, that's a little bit of more advanced number theory you would need to learn to understand when a function has multiplicative property. But in this is like a very introductory problem, as I said, of functional equation. Okay, the second property is much simpler. It says that f of m is equal less than f of n is m is less than n. So the machine, so if this is the machine, let me draw this again. When it takes in a number, it gives out some number f of m. When it takes in another number n, it gives out f of n. All these conditions say this, that if m is greater than n, then f of m will be greater than f of n. So throw in larger numbers inside the machine and you'll get larger outputs. That's precisely what it says. Sometimes this condition is known as monotonic. The first one was known as multiplicative. 
So notice that this condition will be satisfied by our favorite squaring machine. If you square a smaller number, the output will be smaller. So if you like square two, the output will be four. If you square a larger number, the output will be larger and so on. So clearly this second condition that is monotonic will also be satisfied by this squaring machine that we have. The third condition is much more simpler. It just says f of two is equal to two and that sort of throws out the squaring machine, the square function out of the list because if you input two, the output is not two. So we need to think about some other function which has all these properties and which is a, a function from natural numbers to natural numbers. Okay, so what we need to find out is f of one plus f of two plus up to f of 20, this particular sum and um, whatever the sum is, that's, that's your answer. So at this point, why don't you pause the video a little bit and think about this problem and now that you understand the problem very well and then uh, sort of unpause it and come back to the discussion. Okay, let's come back to the discussion now. Uh, there is a standard brute force strategy for solving functional equation problems. So this is sometimes called strategy zero for functional equation. Note that I'm not really much interested about just solving the problem. I'm more interested in explaining some of the strategies, some of the problem solving techniques involved in solving functional equation problem. And this could be a nice way to demonstrate. It. So one standard strategy is this. If you find a functional equation, compute some of the values of the function at some input values and try to find a pattern. So find f of some numbers, some inputs to notice a pattern. That's sort of strategy zero. So for example, in this particular case, we know that f of one, we don't know what is f of one, we know what is f of two, we know that's equal to two. It would be great if we could find out f of one and if it would be also be great to, if we could find out f of some other values. Maybe we can see a pattern out of that and using that we can find out what the function is. Okay, so to find out f of one, we use a very standard strategy. We use one of the conditions present here. The first one, in fact, the multiplicative condition. So this is the second hint find f of one using multiplicative property. You should definitely pause the video at this point and uh, try to find f of one using the multiplicative property. Okay, so let's do that. Um, it's actually quite simple. Notice that f of one times two is equal to f of one times f of two. This is by multiplicative property. Right? Okay, so what is f of two? Well, that's given, it's two. And f of one times two is also f of two. That's also equal to two. So two is equal to f of one times two. So f of one is equal to one. Excellent. So we know what f of one is without a shred of doubt. Can you find some other function values at some other input points? Uh, for example, can you find, uh, this is a hint, can you find f of four and f of eight? Give it a try. Pause the video at this point and give it a try. Try to find out f of four and f of eight. Okay, let's find out f of four. f of four is actually quite simple. f of four is f of two times two 
which is f of 2 times f of 2 which is just 4 because f of 2 is 2 and uh, f of 2 is 2 so the product is 4 okay and f of 8 will definitely be 8 by the same method in fact f of 16 will be exactly equal to 16 in fact now we are at the very end of the problem because we already see a pattern a very strong pattern it looks like that f of n is equal to n this particular function will satisfy all these three properties see f of m times n is equal to f of m times f of n well if f of mn is mn and fm is m fn is n then certainly it works out the second property the monotonic property obviously works the smaller input if the input is output then of course smaller input means smaller output and so on and f of 2 is obviously equal to f of 2 that works pretty well so uh, you see that f of m or rather we are more familiar with x i guess so f of x is equal to x the identity function has all the desired properties that we want and what we really want to do is to find out the sum of f of 1 plus f of 2 up to f of 20 but that's now very simple because let's do it here f of 1 plus f of 2 up to f of 20 is equal to 1 plus 2 up to 20 and which is 20 times 21 by 2 which is 210 you see this is a very standard way of uh, finding the um, sum of n natural numbers I mean you can check that that 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to 20 suppose the sum is s there is a trick called the Gaussian trick or the Gauss trick to find this sum the story goes that Gauss the great mathematician from um, Germany actually solved this problem when he was really young so what he did is he wrote the same sum in the opposite order and then he added these up now notice that each of these is 21 so 18 plus 3 is 21 and so on 20 plus 1 is 21 and s plus s is 2s so he sort of gave a name to the sum which he called s so how many 21s are there obviously 10 of them now 20 of them for each number there is a column so you have 20 times 21 is equals to 2 times s s is the sum the sum that we are trying to compute so just divide by 2 and you have the sum is equal to 10 times 21 which is 210 so that's a guess by the way we have not yet proved that f of n is equal to n or f of x is equal to x using the properties that we have so this is a challenge so challenge is to rigorously show that f of x is equal to x it's an identity function given the properties that you have that is f of mn is equal to f of m times f of n f of m is less than f of n if m is less than n and f of 2 is equal to 2 using these three properties show that f of x is equal to x you see we already have the answer I mean we just found a function by recognizing a pattern a function that satisfies all these properties we do not know whether that's a unique function we guess so maybe it is 
but we do not know it for sure. So we do have to prove this rigorously uh, that uh, f of x is equal to x. So I'll give you a hint and why don't you send me an email containing a detailed proof of why this will work. You see, we already showed f of 1 is equal to 1, f of 2 is equal to 2, f of 4 is equal to 4. Now you see f of 3, which comes in here, must be equal to 3. Why? Because f of 3 must be less than f of 4 and f of 3 must be greater than f of 2 by this monotonic property. And it's a natural number. So there is no other thing that f of 3 can be other than 3. Okay, then you have f of 8 is equal to 8. But then in between, you have f of 5, f of 6, f of 7, 3 numbers. You want to find out what are the values of these. But between 4 and 8, there are only 3 natural numbers. That is 5, 6, and 7. So these values, f of 5, f of 6, f of 7, could be only 5, 6, or 7 in some order. But the order in which that must appear, these numbers must be, is this divided, is uh, sort of decided by this monotonic property. So in order to be monotonic, f of 5 must be 5, f of 6 must be 6, f of 7 must be 7. So this is the general style of the argument that we will be using to uh, prove that f of x is equal to x, but it is a great exercise to rigorously actually write it down. So just send it to me at helpdesk at chinta.com. Also the link in the description has much more problems uh, and have fun with mathematics. I will see you next time. Thank you.